So, you want to shoot in RAW with your iPhone? Good luck. Okay, I suppose I can help. This video is for those who are brand new to the iPhone RAW format, whether you're switching from iPhone JPEG, another kind of phone, or from a traditional camera, here are five things you need to know before shooting iPhone RAW. The first and most fundamental thing you need to know before you start shooting RAW on your iPhone is that you can't do it in the iPhone's stock camera app. You need to buy a third party camera app from the App Store. Now you might be thinking, Dave, in the stock camera app, there's a RAW button right here. Yes, that's true, but this does not refer to the RAW that this video pertains to. This refers to Pro RAW, whereas this video is about Bio RAW. Bio RAW is true RAW, meaning that the files contain exactly what the iPhone's image sensor captured and very little else. And they're actually more like collections of data than image files. Pro RAW, on the other hand, is Bio RAW, but there's a load of processing on top of the file. And this video isn't really the place to go into the differences between Pro RAW and Bio RAW. In fact, I've already made that video, which you can watch here. So head on over to the App Store on your iPhone to choose a third party camera app. There's loads of different ones available with different features, different functionality at different price points. If you're not sure which one is right for you, I've got a few different reviews available on my channel. Now, all of these are a bit outdated. They're at least a year or two, sometimes three years old. And and the apps have changed, but the fundamentals of them have remained the same. So you should still find these videos useful. So you've downloaded your app, you've activated RAW, you take a photo and it looks great. Look at that dynamic range. Look at those colors. This is fantastic. But then you open it in an editor like Lightroom and it looks like this. Okay, so you go back over to your camera app and it looks like this. So what's going on? Well, remember when I said before about iPhone RAW files containing exactly what the image sensor captured and very little else? Well, some of that very little else is an embedded preview image. Not all the time, but a lot of the time when you view a RAW file that you've just captured with your iPhone, you're actually looking at the embedded processed preview. Now this isn't the RAW plus JPEG option, it's actually a very small file embedded into the DNG itself. The same thing happens in other popular editors like Darkroom and even in Mac OS itself. These are all iPhone RAW files, but macOS uses the embedded previews as thumbnails, as evidenced by Quick Look and Affinity Photo. And I'm sure a similar thing happens on PCs as well, but I honestly don't know. But at least now you know what to look out for and what's happening when you see stuff like this happening on your PC. But apart from this being very confusing to new shooters, it's not actually a very big problem at all. But if you don't want it happening, then you can use an app that doesn't embed a JPEG preview at the point of capture, such as Reflex. Directly linked to this is the fact that the viewfinder, the thing you look at on the phone screen that you see when you're taking your photo, is lying to you. We've already established that RAW files look more like this than this, so the viewfinder is obviously processed, which can make it very difficult to achieve an optimal RAW exposure. The way I achieve the exposure that I want is literally by just taking test shots and then checking them in a proper RAW viewer, like Darkroom, and also using my experience in similar situations. But wait a second. What about these exposure guides? You've got histograms, you've got clipping warnings. These are explicitly here to help you achieve the exposure that you want. So why can't you just use those? Well, I'm sorry to say, but they are also lying to you because they are based on the processed viewfinder image and not on the RAW file. And the problem with that is the fact that the iPhone's viewfinder is eight bits, whereas the iPhone's RAW files are 12 bits. Although there is some debate over what is the true bit depth of iPhone RAW files. The 12 bits, we're moving on. But Dave, this EXIF data says they're 16 bits. They're 12 bits, we're moving on. So you've got the 8-bit viewfinder, which can display 256 tonal values per color per pixel. That's a lot. Whereas the iPhone's RAW files are 12 bits and they can display 12 bits and they can display 
4096 tonal values per color per pixel, which is a lot more. So the problem is the 8-bit exposure guides just don't know what's going on because a lot of the tones are beyond their scope. Take this situation, for example. According to Pro Camera's clipping warnings, the only area of the scene that's clipping is the sky. Whereas in reality, all of this down here is clipping too, but the 8-bit exposure guides don't know. However, there is a solution to this problem and it's called Halide Mark II. When you're in auto, when you adjust your exposure in Halide Mark II, you get an 8-bit histogram and 8-bit clipping warnings. But when you switch over to manual mode, these exposure guides become 14 bits, which reveal a lot more. You can see the different colors in the clipping warnings mean that different colors are clipping, but when they turn black and white or gray, then you've had it, everything's clipping. And how they get 14-bit exposure guides when the iPhone RAW files are apparently only 12 bits, according to me, just don't ask. Finally, as you've definitely surmised by now, if you are coming over from a traditional camera system, these won't be the RAW files that you're used to. In fact, you're probably thinking the iPhone RAW just looks like a royal pain in the arse. And you'd be right. Your exposure will be tricky to get most of the time and the files aren't clean even at the lowest ISOs in perfect lighting conditions. And honestly, you'll probably hate everything about iPhone RAW files and will wonder whatever is the point of even shooting them. But despite all of this honest negativity, the fifth thing that you need to know before you start shooting iPhone RAW is the fact that if you are willing to take the time to learn the format, the files that you can get from the system can be really special. The textures and the details are far more natural than any other format that you can currently shoot on an iPhone and you get a ton of dynamic range to play with after the fact. And if you're willing to take the time in editing and put the effort in, you can truly transform your images and take them to a place where no one would have any idea that they are in fact iPhone RAW files. That is all 